What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, back here for another Tottenham update. And Fabrizio Romano has been hard at work today. Yes. We've got a lot of updates from Fabrizio. And let's start off with Harry Kane. Um, and he's saying, during the Euros, Tottenham Hotspur and Kane weren't discussing a new contract as Kane was focusing on a City move. But if Kane stays at Tottenham after the window closes, the situation could change as it is 100% true. Levy wants to give Kane a new contract. When Tottenham received an email about Man City's £100 million bid, they flat out refused, also saying they don't want to talk about Laporte or Gabriel Jesus. Decided uh, to go with Romero instead of Laporte. Man City are not giving up on Harry Kane, though. They still think they have some time to work on a deal and then hoping Kane will join. I think next week we'll have a final answer on this story. Tottenham Hotspur are already looking at many strikers in case Kane leaves the club. Um, is that Vlahovic and Martinez then he's talking about? Definitely. I think that's pretty obvious for everyone to see. He also went on to say that Man City and both Tottenham are both awaiting the green light from Harry Kane to see what he's going to do. <laughs> that's what he said. That Levy's away in the green light from Harry Kane to sign the contract and Man City are away in the green light to see if they can um, get the move. Mm. Um, hopefully this... Hope Surely Man City are waiting the green light from Daniel Levy not Harry exactly. Kane <laughs> you'd, yeah you'd have to think so that's true but um, you'd think that hopefully this could this could be done in the next week that's what he's saying uh, hopefully we'll have a final answer I, I, don't, is, I don't think so that is wide off the mark I think it's fanciful talk yeah. that is, we're going to have a uh, final answer I mean I wish we would um, I still think it's going to rumble on for a, a while longer but at least the contract talk is he seems to be hotting up a bit mm. in terms of it seems to be a genuine offer on the table um, it seems to be genuine possibility he might sign <laughs> I'm it I'm sure it is genuine from Tottenham's side I just don't know if uh, Harry Gaines looking at it like that maybe it depends what is on, what's on there yeah it might, he might be looking at it look if it was so um, if it was that obvious that he wasn't going to sign it I think we'd, he, we'd be hearing that mm. we're not hearing that um, especially we hear what we heard the other day from Alistair Gold that Kane's camp is saying that it's a possibility he could sign it. So um, hopefully that's positive, but we're hoping it comes to a conclusion sooner rather than later because I think we need to move on from it, this situation, whatever happens. We and all know we're not moving on until the 31st of August. I know, which is annoying. And I just we need to move on from it because it's, it's already unsettled us enough. And I think we need a final resolution. Yeah, I completely agree. But let's move on. Uh, next one is from Mike McGrath of The Telegraph, talking about James Ward-Prowse. And he mm. says, Tottenham and Aston Villa are both preparing offers for Ward-Prowse. Spurs rate him very highly, although for Aston Villa, he is their number one midfield target. Uh, so, I mean, I would take, I would so take, get Ward-Prowse in and ship off Winks to Villa. That would be my perfect solution. I don't think that's... I don't think that's the case. I think it would more be maybe either put Ward Prowse in the deal for, um, sorry, put Winks in the deal for Ward Prowse and then maybe shave some money off um, us getting him. I'll and take, that as, well. I'll take that as well. I don't think Villa are going to go for Winks. Um, but we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the Winks uh, situation a bit later. But in terms of just Ward Prowse, be a great signing, I think. In terms of what he offers to the squad, we don't have a set piece specialist right now in the team, especially when Harry Kane's over free kicks. Are you talking so about he, Harry's, why are you blaspheming Harry Kane? No, on Harry free Kane kicks? is that's the one <laughs> thing we can definitely say he is shocking at. What about Eric Dyer? Kicks. He's not a specialist, though, is he? <laughs> um, so we've got Ward Prowse. If if he comes in, now be a, he he would be a fantastic set piece specialist. I think as a central midfielder, he off, also offers a bit more than people think. I think he's very physical. He's a very good passer of the ball in open play, and in a four three three or a four two three one, he can work very very well. Um, he's a good player, and he just it was very unlucky to miss out on the Euros. Mm. But I think he's um extremely talented player, and if he adds depth to that and talent to that central midfield area. I'll be all for it. Um, it's, a, it's big money. It would be big money. How That's much do you reckon? He just signed a five-year deal last mm. year. So you're looking at, you must be looking at, he's 26. You must be looking at between 40 and 50, I would imagine. So Winks and 20 million would do it? Maybe. I think maybe Winks and 25 million. All right, 25. Maybe they would accept it. I don't know. It depends what Southampton are thinking. But Winks, Winks and Sissoko in uh, 15, 20 million. Yeah, that's the Levy special. That's a Levy, Levy, Levy special. One time offer, take it or leave it. Um, but I, look, I, I'd be very happy with it. But a bit like I was saying before, I don't think he's a massive priority at Roma, although Romano said Tottenham are definitely looking at midfielders right now. Um, but it all very dependent on Sissoko's future. But 
Um, I definitely think uh, um, w- uh, Ward Prowse would be a good signing for Tottenham. Yeah, I agree. So I'd be, I'll definitely be in favour of it. And I think it would add a lot of uh, quality to the team. He's a midfielder that really does improve year on year, doesn't he? Mm. Uh, we signed Southampton's captain and Pierre Mohoibia. Okay, now we're linked with another one of their captains. I mean, and and taking their manager in Maurizio Pochettino, they really don't like us. The head definitely, they probably hate. Yeah, <laughs> us and Liverpool raiding them all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't, for some, but for some reason, I think our names being pushed in there to kind of uh, make sh- to drive up Villa's price I reckon maybe I reckon Villa I reckon because we know Villa have the money because they sell Grealish so I think they're more serious than us right now I don't think we're going to st- buy him and a striker without and this Kane money yeah without, right without this Kane <laughs> money so I think right now our name is being used for to get to drive up the price of Villa I reckon that's mm-hmm. my prediction uh, talking on another Southampton player Yannick Vestergaard mm-hmm. uh, this one's from Ali Gold and he's um, is it from Ali Gold? Or anyway, I think it's from. Is it from? No, I think it's from Romano. No, it's not from Ali Gold. Yeah, I think it's from Romano. And he says Tottenham Hotspur, alongside Leicester, West Ham, and Wolves, are interested in Yannick Vestergaard with Southampton holding out for eighteen million pounds. I mean, yeah, just not for me, man. Well, the Athletic have reported a few hours ago that uh, Leicester have made a bid for him. Um, so that lo- so he looks like his favourite to go there. Uh, him to Leicester makes sense well. with all their defensive injuries yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the thing. So I don't think um, to him to Spurs right now is the biggest possibility. But for me, Vestergaard's underrated. I've said it all along. I don't think he's a bad player. Um, if he were, if we were to sign him um, to partner Romero, I mean, I th- we could do worse. I'm saying, telling you right now, we could do worse than Vestergaard. I don't think he's as bad as people we think. We can do worse, but we could also do better. Then that's the thing. So for 15 million, I'd much rather get a Milenkovic in than Vestergaard. Mm. And he, they're about the same price. So um, I don't think it's a go right now for Tottenham. It's one of those where if, all our, if we've exhausted all our options, it will be like a plan E or F or something. But um, I think if Leicester are going to trump us, I think that's it. I think they're going to beat us to the punch. Mm. Uh, let's move on back to Takehiro Tomiyasu. Uh, pretty much the same update on him that we've given you all along. Uh, Romano says they are still in talks with the agent of the player, but there is still no agreement with Bologna. The deal is not off yet. So, I mean, he's kind of indis- insinuating that the deal could be off at some point. If he's he said it's, it's not, not off. off yet. Yeah, but I think he's implying that it's still on, I think, by saying it's not off yet. Um, yeah, but it was still in talks. I don't know. This is dragging on way too long. This Tommy asked. I, I don't mean, know how how long is. could they be speaking to Bologna over three million pounds? Yeah, how, exactly. It's literally it must be a few million. <laughs> They're like, how long can they be speaking? Because they want we eighteen were three million off like two months ago. They want eighteen. We want to pay fifteen. Just oh, just pay the money. Tommy. And originally they only they wanted twenty, 20 so they've already dropped so their price I by two. I don't know. <laughs> like, honestly, it's dragging on. So after the Olympics is gonna is gonna be done. Now it's after the Olympics. Oh, now there's still no agreement. Oh, just for God's sake. Levy, just stop, stop with the haggling. I'm, I'm starting to feel this Tommy Asu thing is is some sort of smoke screen or some for Maybe. some other right back or something because if we're really serious about Tommy Asu, he'd be through the door already. Yeah, so surely if we really wanted him that badly, I think it would be a no brainer. It's not we're not talking about massive money here. We're talking about 18 million, which you know for for a player you really want, you so say you don't even think about it that long. That kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So I don't understand what the hold up is. And again, um, remember in Kudu, how long we waited for oh that one. We, that was a whole summer we yeah, waited yeah. for. A <laughs> he fi- was crap. <laughs> we were a whole summer for a fi- 14 million pound transfer, I remember. And, uh, Did and then we get that the last day of the window? It was like one of the last days, yeah. yeah. That was ridiculous, that one. All right, let's move on. Christian Romero has been speaking and uh, some really good quotes here from Christian Romero. And he says, in every club that I've been, the people always saw my effort. It doesn't matter if we're doing well or having a rough time. I'm willing to give everything to grow as a player and leave a legacy here in this club. And those are the exact words uh, we wanted to hear from Christian Romero. And, mm. it, and it kind of plays into um, kind of what everyone's been telling us about him, about he, how, the way he acts on the football pitch. Yeah, and he's, uh, he's a fighter. He's a warrior and that's what we need on the full pitch we don't have enough of Just these like people Daniel Levy. people well not quite <laughs> different different kind of warrior but we don't have enough people I'd feel feel that uh, leave everything on the pitch and and um, completely want to give everything to the team and he seems like one of those guys so I'm really excited to have him on board I can't wait to see him in his first game Romano was also saying on him that he believes his injury is not serious at all and there's a chance he'll be involved on Sunday um, whether or not he, he's ready for that we'll have to wait and see but you know, I'm very excited we have this new centre-back through the door and I can't wait to see him play. Mm. 
Dusan Vlahovic, uh, this update is from Romano, and he says Fiorentina would want more than 60 million euros for Dusan Vlahovic, which is why a Vlahovic deal is not so easy for Tottenham. I mean, he says it's not so easy, but we've already bid 70 million for Martinez. Well, 60 million euros, wasn't it? Plus. Oh, for Martin. Okay, so even, even so. Even so, so. It's not, well, maybe we don't value Vahovic as highly as Martinez. Maybe we're not as convinced by him as we mm. are, so that makes it more difficult, I think. Just because we bid what, that for one player doesn't mean it automatically means we're going to bid it, it for another. It just proves that, you know, I mean, it doesn't prove anything because it was probably on the back of um, potential Harry Kane um, leaving this summer. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if Harry Kane leaves, I do expect us uh, to go out there and stump up the money for Vlahovic. I agree. I just, I think all this talk about um, strikers for big money, I, always, I just think it's in, in regard, it all revolves around Kane. I really don't believe we're going to sign a. I, I believe we could sign a striker, but I don't believe we're going to sign one for big, big money unless Kane leaves. That's, I just can't see it. I don't think it's in Tottenham's DNA to do that. <laughs> so I it's just, definitely not in Tottenham's DNA. So I think all sure. this talk of we want to sign a big strike to play with Kane, all this kind of stuff, I don't believe it. Mm. I just don't believe it. And moving on to the next striker target, and that is Lautaro Martinez. Fabrizio Romano says. If there is a chance, it is for 90 million, not 70 million. If Tottenham will try again, it will have to be with add-ons to arrive at 90 million euros. Yes, yeah, exactly. So um, we ain't we ain't spending 90 million euros. Not, not without selling Kane, we ain't. No. I can guarantee you that 120. Even, even with selling so, Kane, we're probably not spending 90 million euros. Yeah, it's unlikely. Which is what, what my point about the you know how difficult this deal is uh, now Lukaku's gone. It means they can add an extra 20 million onto the price, knowing the fact they've got a bit of extra security on that deal now so I still think as I said there's we as I said consistently there's a chance it'll happen but it'll have to be for a price like that so whether we whether we're willing to go that high it's unlikely isn't it so unlikely it probably all uh, relates to Harry Kane leaving or not are we really going to splash that a bigger portion of the amount of the Harry Kane money on uh, Martinez I don't know maybe we are willing to do it I'm just I'm doubtful yeah, me too. Uh, but look, let's move on. Harry Winks, uh, this is from Romano, and he says, I'm told that Everton have an interest in him, but I'm also told that he's really happy at Spurs, but he can be a player with a lot of potential and he still wants to show his skills at Tottenham. Um, I mean, he's been trying for the past couple of years to show his skills at Tottenham. Haven't really worked out um, to his capabilities. I mean, he's, he has shown uh, glimpses and he has shown... Um, good fight in a Tottenham shirt but this hasn't he hasn't done that on a consistent level since Pochettino so for me I'm happy to get rid and if Everton are happy taking us off, us off our hands uh, for 20 25 million uh, thank you for the service and goodbye yeah but you know is another player is a human being yeah? so if he wants to stay you can't force him out no, you unless can't. you less unless you literally tell him like you're going to be in the reserves and all that kind of stuff which we could but I don't think we will to Winks. I think even if you t- if you tell Winks he's going to be a sub uh, for the coming season and you don't see him as a starter do you think he would want to stay around for that depends uh, depends on his mentality if he if he wants to fight for his place no, um, he wants to get in the England squad doesn't he if he, and he wants to get in the, if he wants to fight for his place for, for Spurs and he's happy at Tottenham then he might think I'm, I'm better off staying there's no better club for me to be at but if um, if he's thinking look I maybe I need a better platform to show my skills and if I'm not going to get guaranteed the opportunities at Tottenham I'm better off leaving and if Everton come in for a good uh, come in for a good price then um, then obviously it's worth taking the money I don't know I just I just get the feeling it ain't going to happen I just mm. get the feeling he's going to end up staying uh, that's my gut but um, I feel like Winks I feel like Nuno's probably told I don't think Nuno has told him like you're not in my plans I don't believe that I believe Nuno's told him you're going to get opportunities this season I believe no, not necessarily guaranteed but I reckon he told him you're, I can see you being in my team that's why I reckon Nuno's told him um, I just so, can't see him getting consistent minutes otherwise apart from the Cups and the, and the Conference League depends, yeah I mean depends if he backs himself Winks to get into that team or not I mean he loves Tottenham we know that he's a Tottenham boy he came for our academy so um so we know that if he, he would rather make it at Tottenham than make it somewhere else. I guess it depends whether he thinks he's guaranteed a lot more, how much more time he's guaranteed at Everton than he is at Spurs. If he thinks he's definitely guaranteed a starting spot every game, then it's probably worth it. But if he thinks he has to go to Everton and fight for his spot there, I mean, I can't, I can't think off the top of their head who they have at centre mid, but... Um, well, apparently they're looking to sell Andre Gomez at the moment. Mm, I don't know. 
I look. It have, depends who they come in for an offer. If he could. We could easily put him in the Ward Prowse deal. I would be definitely in favour of that. But I just get the feeling Winks is going to be sticking around for another year. That's mm. what I reckon. And see and see how he goes. All right. Let's move on. This one is about Ben Davis, again from Fabrizio Romano. And he says, Davis is one of the players that could leave this summer, but isn't a priority. So it will only be considered if an important bid comes in. Yeah. Um, I think that Ben Davis, um, again, I don't think it's guaranteed that we're, that we're going to sell him. So um, I think, again, what, who's going to come in with a important bid for Ben Davis? Is anyone really going to come in for an important bid for him? What's important bid for 10 million Davis? probably must be, at least. Can't so, see it. Can't I see it. Know. Unless like someone in the lower end of the Premier League, maybe one of the promoted clubs come in for him. Apart from that, I maybe can't Southampton, see it. Maybe put him in the Southampton deal. They just sold Bertrand, didn't they? Maybe that could be something. Could be. Yeah, that, that could be a shout. Maybe uh, Ben Davis and Harry Winks, a straight swap for... Uh, Will Prowse, yeah, right. Prowse. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Southampton would love that. It has to be plus probably around 20 million as well. Ben, so Southampton, uh, Ben Davis left back, Carl Walker Peters right, right back. back. Exactly, and Winks in the middle, <laughs> loving it. Um, yeah, I, again, uh, as much as I would, I think it would be worth our while to get him out, out of the squad and free up a space, again, I, I think he's staying. Mm. Um, all right, let's talk about that Tungi Undombele again, as Romano is saying. If the bright bid comes in, Tottenham are prepared to talk to Tungi Undombele about selling him. Uh, they are not desperate to move him on. Um, I don't think anyone is desperate to move him on. Um, I mean, there are actually quite a few fans that are dead yeah. against Tungi at the moment. But, uh, you know, the pictures coming out on Aurier's social media today does look uh, like he's trim and he's getting fit for the season. And he was in high spirits wearing the captain's armband as well. So um, mm. hopefully... He looked happy, didn't he? He did look happy. Yeah, so hopefully... Uh, that's with his mate Aurier. He's yeah, exactly. leaving. <laughs> 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 getting shipped out. I think, yeah, I think, as I said before, with Don Bele, I think it's a... You can't. I think when it gets it gets to a stage where if you're getting if you're not getting if you're taking too big of a hit, then it's worth keeping him just for it's worth taking the risk on keeping him to see if you can uh, get the best out of him. So I think with Don Bella, I think I I, I, do, I wouldn't like to use the phrase of stuck with him, but I just think with his wages and how much he's going to cost, I think it's so unlikely. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but I think look, I don't, I don't the reason I don't want to say stuck with him is because I think top he, quality, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think we can if we can get the best out of him, we we will be the winners out of that situation. We will, but it's all about mentality and your and I'm sorry, like you can have all the talent in the world, but you're not a top player until your mentality matches up that skill. Correct. And that's the facts of the matter. Um, let's move on to the last uh, update of the video. And we've got uh, talking about Dennis Zakaria and Toliso. And Fabrizio Romano says Paratici has a strong relationship with Dennis Zakaria's agent. I would keep an eye on this one because uh, Zakaria and Toliso have the same agent, I think. Mm -hmm. That's uh, what he's saying. And yeah. he's saying I would keep an eye on one of these two players. It depends on money, but also on if they find a solution for Sissoko. And I mean, oh. either of these players yeah. will be an upgrade on Sissoko. If we can get Tolisso, that would be brilliant. I love Tolisso. I think he's a really good player. Mm. He's got one year left on his deal at Bayern. Um, I think he's. Uh, I think he would be a player who would definitely he was in be a French big squad, upgrade. Wasn't he for the Euros? Yeah. He's a, he's a really strong central midfielder and, he, and he's got a really good um, technical ability as well. So Tolisso would definitely be one I'd be very, very interested in if we were able to bring him in. I think he's a much better player right now than Zakaria. Mm. Um, although, you know, Zakaria has a bit younger, so he has a bit of scope to improve and develop. Um, but I think Tolisso right now is ready-made to come in the team. Um, he's at a good age and he's a lot better than Sissoko. Um, so it would be a massive upgrade on that, and he would add a lot of great depth to the squad, and he would definitely be fine for the first team, that's for sure, as a consistent starter. Um, so for sure, um, I would want Tolisso if we were able to get him. Mm. Yeah, I, I echo those thoughts. I think Tolisso is a very, very good player, and I think we'd be lucky to get him through the door in terms of the kind of central midfield options that we're looking at at the moment. Zakaria, Ward-Prowse, Tolisso. I mean, Tolisso is the one that really stands out, isn't he? Oh, he's, in terms of value for money, eh? I think he does. Uh, do I think he's a different level to Ward-Prowse? Not necessarily, but I think in terms of value for money, because uh, get, we're getting him at a good price, I think he's definitely worth getting in. Mm. All right. I mean, I'm just looking at his stats now. I mean, he hasn't played a lot of football over the last three years, has he? Oh, yeah, he plays for Bayern Munich, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, 16 uh, appearances in the Bundesliga last year, 13 the year before, and two the year before. I think he had um, a big injury maybe oh, last year. Okay. 
Well, look, that is your Tottenham update today. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the news we have brought to you today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.